I know. This picture looks like the obligatory corporate photo to commemorate who is present and what's happening at an event, and it is. But I'm using it as a jumping off point to start talking about what matters instead. It's true that these are some of the community and academic leaders in the role of diversity in Morgantown. And I have been one long enough to have earned recognition last year from the State Human Rights Commission and Governor's Office for Civil Rights Advocacy. But I'm ready to say that this doesn't matter to this talk either. It's not about me. I've had the senior design course since 2011, and we've delivered a lot of good products for communities, and we've had a very good track record. My goal has always been to plant seeds of responsibility and citizenship in students whose biological clock has most of their interests elsewhere. I had come to expect that there'd be some late bloomers among the class, not only in design products, but also in why we're doing this. One particularly painful student evaluation comment one time said, I'm tired of working for each charities, even though our client was the city of Morgantown, hardly a charity. But there are always students who get it. And 2019 looked like a great roster and was. It was the perfect group of students and the perfect set of clients. I had asked them before the summer break what they wanted the course to be about in the fall. And over the summer, I worked on setting up contacts and relationships so that when fall came, we did five projects and it was positive and fun. We gave the newly formed Morgantown Pride Organization a brand. Templates for events, lots of cool messages and a website. With all of our clients, we keep them in the process throughout so they've got a voice in it. A really great project was the Ways of Caring mural that had just gotten the final pieces in place to happen. And our portraits of the diverse community leaders were put on the wall downtown by us, along with painters from all walks of life and demographics, demographics from the homeless population to the mayor and business leaders to the interfaith, LGBT, Muslim Student Association, and any passersby who wanted to help. Even zombies, it was all about the storytelling that happened at the wall and students loved it. One community we always work with is an integrated group of former coal camps called Scott's Run. We've delivered something every year for them that helps tell their stories in many forms from a museum with exhibits to books often made in house, interpretive signs, a community garden to a CD with songs and stories that were even performed live in the downtown theater with a stage. We always involve them in the process. And they are so comfortable with us now that we can take big risks and not lose their trust. And then came 2020. Project number one starts in August after we were sent home in March to finish the last month online. It's shaky whether we can stay in place in person. We have to do something for Scott's run before the outbreak sends us away again. This summer when I asked students what they wanted to do, George Floyd had already been killed. All of them said they wanted to work with Black Lives Matter. We zoomed into Scott's Run, we zoomed with Scott's Run folks and other members of the NAACP the first day of school to get some bearings. Over the summer, I had written a grant to an RFP from the West WVU Humanities Center. We had $1,000 to do something that would address COVID-19 with our community. How under these conditions? Scott's Run's social capital is all about personal relationships. I love bringing college students to meet residents from a very different socioeconomic level, race, and generation. Their average age there is 75. I showed them what I showed you. I ran around with a video camera and recorded the town and museum without many people in it. It was sad. I told stories. I played excerpts from the video of the concert and we read case studies from this really great book from Andrew Shea that talks about mistakes made and lessons learned from them along with successes. Then I assigned my introverted art students to make a personal phone call on Zoom or regular call to these strangers to ask them what, the, we, what we might do with their community with this grant. I'd already briefed the community, but the students needed to build some trust. That's chapter one of our textbook. We usually do it by cleaning up the area for the street fair with them. No street fair this year. So here is what happened. I took my computer to Miss Sarah's house, who
who doesn't do computers. At 96, she's got better things to do. They talked over the questions we'd written and about her life. And eventually she asked John what made him interested in black lives. He tells her that he has a black girlfriend who wants to be a better partner for her. And I watch as Miss Sarah tells John that she had a relationship with a white Jewish man in Philly who was the love of her life. She told me only a year ago, and at that time said even her family didn't know about him. Needless to say, they bonded. Other students also had success meeting re residents. Christian and Trevor learned that Al Anderson was once citizen of the year and had worried about someone shooting him in Morgantown when he had to ride on a convertible in a parade. He also told them about his time as lead singer for Billy Ward and the Dominoes in 1965. Instead of the comfy museum where Mary Jane Coulter always filled everyone with coffee and snacks as soon as they walked through the door, we were outside with me showing ideas on a computer screen, but they were good sports and I brought back reactions. They loved the idea of a care package and told us what ingredients might be appreciated. They also bought into the idea of a yard sign. Our joint idea is to help people know they're not forgotten that they have a purpose, that they have to stay safe and find a way to vote in this election, maybe with a mail-in ballot. They're with us on that, though a lot of the community is mask resistant. On the left, you see a label that is inside our box when it's opened. You can't read it, but it thanks the, the community for sharing stories with us and inspiring us. We social distance in the classroom, which is normally seating 20, but we were half that. We were a sweatshop for a few days. We put the stories onto cards, buttons, and a gratitude journal that also has other messages appealing to their care for one another and resilience values to do better with masks. The puzzle was from a picture from the National Archives of their town in the 40s that looked like Mayberry if Mayberry was integrated and if it had a railroad track going down the middle of the main street. The pictures bordered with countries our residents hailed from. One of our classmates had a grandfather from there whose father had come from Hungary to work the mines. To make our thousand dollars go far enough, we made all of our things printed on paper ourselves. We do book art, so we had materials and a 1908 guillotine. Our boxes contain things on the right. The idea is that they get to keep some things and pass on other things to neighbors and friends to spread it farther and to get some connecting activity going. They like to write letters, letters, they told us, but short ones like cards. So we had eight card designs packed into our package and we included envelopes and stamps. We also made yard signs with our solidarity tag of together when, even when apart. Thank you, Abigail. We converted photos to illustrations and used our same messages about voting and being safe. To personalize the boxes, we added a note from the person who had interviewed them with references to something they had said or if they had not been interviewed, a message from one of us showing respect for what we had learned. Jerry said it was her favorite thing in the box and she even loves puzzles. Sarah examined everything in her box while I was there. It was very sad that the students couldn't come with me, but we were being safe. I was masked, of course. Al, who has 14 cats, was especially pleased with the extra cat mask I'd found for him and a CD copy of him singing the high note in Georgia, something Gabby, recorded for him. Some boxes benefited from years of knowing them. Dolly got her box and yard signs and made it her personal mission that day, that minute, to take a bunch more signs and plant them with me all over the neighborhood. Good idea. Lou, who hadn't been able to go anywhere, was delighted with his box and sign and immediately hung it where his Mountaineer flag had just been. He also gave us about 80 fresh bazelles he had just made. George and his wife taught politics with me for almost two hours and later wrote a lovely letter to us. He had been nowhere but the doctor's office from March to October. Charlene, who you'll meet in the next project, was the first to pick her sign and loved the bravery message. She served me Texas cake and gave me a hand crochet dishcloth she had just made. Midterm, we start our second project. Black Lives Matter with the NAACP and other members of the black community we have met and could think of to reach out to. We would end up naming this project Amplify. We got away with being in person for the first project, but now we've been sent home for a while because the numbers spiked. The election's going nuts. 
mail-in voting looks attacked by the new postmaster general. Black Lives Matter is being called a terrorist organization by people who should know better. We're all anxious and disturbed. Some have vulnerable family members and personal things going on. And we are 90% white with no experience in tackling wicked problems. Yikes. But we can educate ourselves. There are people writing great books that speak to what it's like living in a white dominated country. There's a history opening up that goes back 400 years instead of 50. And they're packaged for us in podcasts or TED Talks by the authors. Aware of how hard it is to focus with all this going on, I made a template for writing responses to the reading or listening that started by asking, where is their head right now? What are they thinking about? What do they suspect this article is going to tell them? Then after summarizing it, they speak to memories or thoughts that triggered in them. What are the celebrations, the pain points in the article? And there's a column for saving quotes that come from the reading, so it's easier to find later. The citation information is at the top of the template, so that's easier to find later as well. Then I gathered folks from the Black community to Zoom with us, two to four at a time. We created the questions list. One Zoom was with two 80-year-old women, Joan Browning, who'd been a white female freedom rider in 1961 and then dedicated the rest of her life to civil rights. The other was Charlene Marshall, the first female Black mayor in West Virginia, later a delegate from Morgantown. They were friends who'd served together on the West Virginia Human Rights Commission. On Zoom, we talked with about 15 people. Antionette Carroll talks, calls them living experts. When I asked my introverted students to interview other people, the first round was business owners, black friends and relatives. Then I asked them to interview people with letters after their names. The mayor of Morgantown, the vice president of diversity at WVU, a woman in the provost's office, the dean of the College of Creative Arts, and they did it. And we got stories. Daniel Walker is our black feisty works her tail off delegate for District 51 who gets death threats for her efforts. She told us of this incident that made the paper where she and Jerry Carr, NAACP chapter president and WVU astrophysicist professor were called the N-word, apes and terrorists by white men carrying AR-15s with Nazi insignia on their shirts. Jerry told us that with the conservative legislature we have and the red state that we are, the thing we can do for them is to become allies. Talk to other white people and bring them in as allies because there aren't enough of them to make a change happen. Amplify allyship became our mission. The Dean of the Creative Arts Center said it should be fill in the blank, that it's more than just black lives at stake. All marginalized people and people at intersections of more than one difference are even more at risk. We went to claim the domain name of Amplify Taken, Amplify underscore Taken. We could have it with four. Which to my mind recalled what Marjorie Fuller, director of the Center for Black Culture and Research had said to us in regard to the wall people put up when they say all lives matter. They're missing the implied too. Black lives matter too. In our work with nonprofits, we sometimes work with health professionals trying to help change behavior. The Prochaska transtheoretical model of stages of change is a simpler idea than the mouthful it is to speak. It's the idea that you can't make change in one step. For designers with a message, it fits. You have to meet people where they are for them to hear you. Prochaska says there are five stages of change with one extra for relapse. The goal is to move one person one stage at a time. We all know about personas now, this is like a flexible persona that can adapt. Each change has an action or state of being. For pre-contemplation, where it's not even on your radar, you're either uninformed or misinformed. As you find out about it and ask questions, you become a contemplator. As you learn enough to believe there's truth in a new idea, you make a plan. As you become ready to stand up for the community, in our case, you're in the action stage. And as you become wholly committed and willing to reach out and recruit others, you're in maintenance. Emotions go with each of these stages here in the green. People make decisions with their emotions. Facts back up our decisions, but they don't change our minds. The people, the purple ring in our plan is to design, are things that we design that are something to help that stage. Often they are downloadable resources. On this table on the right, 
moral decision making, our emotions, have been studied by Jonathan Haidt, the social psychologist. He tells us that conservatives and liberals use the same moral foundations to make decisions, but conservatives use more of them than liberals. And if liberals want to be heard by conservatives, they need to stop insulting and stepping on the morals that matter to conservatives. Since no moral foundation is bad by itself, it's only when applied in an unfair way that incites liberals. We need to find common language in which to couch our messages. For designers, that means not yelling phrases that have become misconstrued like defund the police when all you really want is investment in areas that are struggling and desperate that lead to more crime and to not ask police officers to intervene in areas they aren't trained for. How this translates for us is when one student thinks of a conservative family member who identifies with police and authority and begins her message with patriotism. We took on tasks that would populate categories of action we heard from our experts. We knew we needed to start conversations, define and explain true allyship, help tell the untold story, embrace the discomfort that comes with owning your own white privilege, and then use it for good. We also wanted to point to a current piece of legislation that hurts no one to pass, but ends one form of discrimination, the Crown Act. We first looked at a link tree to hold our resources, but then decided to do a website that could be claimed or linked to a site of an organization with staff to maintain it. It would be created on Squarespace or a platform easy for non-designers to update. These are some screens that show segments in a scroll or clickable parts of a grid and a section for community stories. To the right is one of the downloadable wallpapers. Looking at the website in the center, our plan is to design some of the things to be in the environment that will have a message and also include a QR code or URL to take people to our website. These include t-shirts, posters in business windows, spray chalk, or QR codes on sidewalk and social media. On the other side of the diagram is what you'll find on the website. Some examples shown are people from black history beyond the familiar ones, stories from the community, downloadable resources like the wallpapers, printed material from the sites, and uh, unique ways to learn about black culture. A curated uh, set of genres of music through Spotify. These can even be printed and shared as a door or rear view mirror hang tags. Here's an example of posters and a wallpaper, all supporting the Crown Act. If you don't know what the Crown Act is, it's a law already passed in seven states that ends hair discrimination to let natural hair, locks, and other hairstyles be allowed in the workplace and includes hijabs in the protection from discrimination. T-shirts and a poster pick up on the idea that your discomfort is not as critical as our West Virginia home being on fire. And the two kinds of discomfort are not comparable. These social media posts are a few of many topics. The multiple one will play as a timed animated GIF for Instagram that will lead to the website or other resources. Here are a few other social media topics, racism in the media, and egregious racial caricatures from the Jim Crow Museum collection. One particularly awful one is the uh, Coon Chicken Inn, where you walked into the door through the mouth of a blackface sculpture. It's important to be able to share the comprehensive plan of the project, and also the ways we got here, ways that would improve our research ethically and responsibly. In making an infographic that explains this, students are able to analyze exactly what was done and why. This will also become a credible portfolio piece. A narrative that accompanies the infographic is another way to assess how students' personal experience unfolded through the process that can discuss less tangible things like how it applies to future projects or team dynamics, et cetera. In this example, Ali realized that feeling guilt will not solve anything. What matters is how you apply your emotions to create change. Gabby noted that with the wild ride of emotions and feeling of the world crashing and everything being out of control, being able to create work that has helped others has restored some sanity back into my life. John says that I understand more clearly now how things can be interpreted differently by people, even those on the same side. Even certain names or groups or phrases can give complications to our project and complicate meeting our overall goal. 
In this cool, unpredictable outcome, Abigail discovered a newfound love for research that she had hated previously. That one's got legs. In the end, we made something from nothing. We came in all ears with no plan and no budget. Through a process, we exit with something to be proud of, changed ourselves, and with a gift to pass on. A couple of us are around next term to finish out the website. Thank you.